Good morning everybody, Pinchiel here and we are on our way to work on Pappy the Bus. Now Pappy the Bus is the 71 Volkswagen Bay window that I own and we're gonna do what we call carb sinking on some empty dual 40 uh, HP MX carburetors now these carbs are a little finicky it's one thing I don't like about them they take a couple you drive them set them and drive them for a long time say two months three months and then they go out of sync I don't I think it's probably because of the vibrations uh, things get loose and so they freak out so this is Pappy the bus and today on Pinchiao's garage we're gonna do some carbs so stay tuned and thanks for watching today tools on today's DIY you're gonna need a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter wrench now these are the tools I need to do use these carburetors these are like I said um, these are the MP dual 40s HPMMX um, so this is pretty much it this is all we need to do an adjustment actually you know what stand corrected I gotta do get pull my sink uh, sinker out uh, the sinking tool is pretty neat it can tells you your RPMs uh, let me pull that sucker out. I can find it in my my toolbox somewhere in here. There it is. So this is a sinking tool, and this reads pretty much um, the air, which tells us the RPMs for the engine. So we're gonna need this. As well, so these three tools you're gonna need an eight, a ten, and the sinking tool. Uh, this I picked up for about like twenty-five bucks uh, at a local shop. So first things first, you need to turn your car on, let it run, let it warm up, and then we can start doing the uh, the sinking and the uh, adjustments for the car. So you guys can see how the uh, car is idling pretty bad you know and it's because the carburetors are out of sync when it's that uh, cold so this is why we have to wait till it warms up so we can get the idle correct and then we get the fuel mixture correct so it takes about a minute or two for the car to warm up so stay tuned as you guys can see now the car is not as vibrating as bad but still pretty bad so we gotta find out what the heck's going on here Figure out why he's doing 
that. I know it's hard to hear me, but hopefully you guys can understand that. I'll repeat everything as we go forward too. So, I think it's warm enough. And we can turn this off. We have the engine off after a good warm up. We're gonna pretty much take off the links here. And we're gonna take off the air cleaners. These are pretty much super vital to this uh, DIY here. Pull these guys off, move them out of the way. So now, with your air cleaners off, you'll notice this is tapered here. Make sure that the uh, holes on your sinking tool are not being blocked on here and push down nice and firmly. And you're going to put it on here, just like that. Now it's tapered so you, when you put this on your velocity stack, it sits there nicely and it sits there nice and firm and does what it's supposed to do. So the next thing you guys need to do is take off your links here. And that's why you need the number 8. If you're lucky, these will come off pretty easily. Sometimes they don't. Now since Pappy the bus has not been ready for show season because, well, winter kind of hit us here in California. I know we don't really have a winter, but we have downtime. I guess we can call it that. <laughs> so... Alright, so now make sure that one's off. And then this one goes in the opposite direction. Okay, we're also getting ready to swap out the battery on this one. My battery's finally going bad on this bad boy. You can see, it's kind of hard, but you can see there's a lot of battery acid. And it's getting hard to crank over. But... The cool thing these cars don't need very much of a big battery to crank over. They don't have much needed for it, so that's nice. Yeah, so this is the slow part. We'll get to the good part. So now that we got the links taken off, uh, with your 10 millimeter wrench, I would personally break loose these guys right here. And these are the uh, adjustment arms right here. What you do is that when you spin the middle piece, this will go up or down depending on where you need it. So break those loose. Once you do that, um, you're ready for your adjustments. Now, I'll show you over here. I'll take you guys off of this little guy right here. And you'll see here, this is the idle screw, and then this is the mixture screw that we need to adjust. Well, yeah, this one we turn clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on the idle. So uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, when the car is on, I will do the best I can for you guys, for you to hear me, but I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, it's going to be loud. So what's going to happen, and I'll explain it to you as it's uh, being, while it's being filmed and while we're off the camera, or while the car's off. So right now I'm going to explain to it while the car's off. So since we don't have the, um, the link uh, set up, these throttles are going to be individual. So the first thing we need to do is set our sinking tool up here. And personally, I like to have my RPM set around 5 to like 450 to 500 RPMs on each side. 
Um, this, for some reason, anything higher than that, when I turn this car off, it'll backfire. But if I keep it at a lower RPM, not as much fuel is going into the exhaust and all that, and so there's no backfire. So, I don't know why it does it. It just does it. It could be because of my throttle cable. I don't know. Um, this is just what I've been doing, and this is how I figured it out with my car. And you remember, every air-cooled is going to be different, and it's going to perform and react differently every single time. So, no, no air-cooled engine will ever be the same, even if it's the same build. That's one thing I've learned over the years with these cars. So now that we have the sinking tool here, we're going to adjust the throttle when the car is on. Like I was saying, this will set your RPMs, and you want to set it around, I want to set it around five to 600. Uh, sometimes I'll set it around 45, just depends on how fast it idles with um, with the throttle. Just It just depends on where you're at at idle. Um, once you figure that out, the next thing is your your adjustment or your balancing of your cylinders. Now, since you have dual carbs per side, technically you have four carburetors because you have one throat per cylinder. So you have four adjustment screws. screws. You have one here and then one towards the back. These screws are we're going to allow you to uh, set your pretty much your balance, your harmony across all four cylinders and that's something you have to listen for. So if you're bad or hard of hearing, this is really hard for you to, it's gonna be really hard for you to do. Um, another thing is it's visual, but it's very slightly visual, not very drastic. So it depends on how your engine reacts to it. Um, and what I mean by visual, if the cylinder is off balance, the engine will tremble left and right, and that's how you know it's off balance. So that means you're gonna have to open the screw out and allow the mixture to balance the cylinder um, you'll notice it and like I said you'll you'll see it and then we'll show you you'll see it when I get to it so now that we got the engine warmed up let's turn the car back on and then go from there so you'll see right off the bat my RPMs are set around 300 that's really low back up bring that sucker back up to about 45 so here's 5 I'm in the middle of that so it's about 45 I'm going to move this over and the same problem I'm over here at 3000 now I'm at 45 on both sides Double check your RPMs. See that back one? A little too high for me. About 45. 45. 45. And now we're set. Now the bolt cover is at the right idle where I want them to be. But now we gotta figure out how to get them to sink. See that? I'm not sinking, so there's issues with, with idling here. So what we have to do is first drop the idle mixture down. You'll notice the engine's vibrating. And then what we do, we turn the, the, the screw back out. Little by little. You see the idle change right there? That's where you want that. And now what you do, you do this a full half turn after that. And you're done. That's it. Now we check the back one. Close the valve all the way down. Bring it and open it back up. The idle changes again. That one's not as odd. 
off the edge. So we're going to work on the other side for our neck. We'll crank our way around it. And you'll notice we do the idle change again. Open that sucker up. Once the idle fixes, half a turn, we're done. There's that one. Now we'll take this sucker out. There you go. Half a turn. This cylinder over here, this one's not uh, mixing. So we gotta turn the car off and clean out one of the jets. But I was talking about one of the jets, so it looks like this one of my jets here is not fueling pretty much. And I'll show you what I mean when I pull it out. Um, every carburetor or every inlet has its own little jet system that allows fuel mixture. And more likely it's just not mixing right. And sometimes what happens is that dirt gets in there, you know, or the vibration moves it around, freaks it out. This is typical maintenance. So. I'll tell you this, don't freak out, it's kind of the norm. come out that means you're gonna have to use you're gonna have to take off your velocity stack from the back um, if you don't want to do that grab some carb cleaner gunk brakes and part cleaner this is great and spray it down the hole spray it around there doesn't fix it this is just a quick little try just to see if it works or not I don't think it's gonna work I'm gonna probably have to take the velocity stack off but I just want to show you you know quickly this is a trial and error like scenario so so you do that Turn your car back on and see if it actually idles better or not. So one thing I can tell you about removing the velocity stack, um, which is these guys right here, they are held by two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts and a, a little locking washer. When you take them off, take them off by breaking them loose first and then take them off by hand. So you don't drop the little washer or nut into the hole in the middle of the um, carburetor. There's a little washer that sits on here. Sometimes they won't come out by hand. I kind of wiggle them. See? These are locking washers, so you'll see they're kind of curved. They're supposed to put a little tension on that nut, uh, on the nut, so they don't um, break loose on you. So now with that stack off, remove your jet. It's a lot easier removing that things off, and then pull your jet out. Turn you around over here. So now with this removed, you want to 
going to spray down the throat of the jet. On the outside of it. You can take it off. They come right apart. Sometimes. <laughs> if not, don't try not. Don't try it. Usually that and throw a little bit down the throat again. Once you do that, you're going to go back around. We're going to reinstall our jet. It just falls back in place. And we always suggest that you try to put it in by hand first. And then when you tighten it, I mean, you don't have to force it in. Just like a little, and that's it. You're done. Don't go crazy with the tightening because it's brass, not very strong metal. You can definitely cross thread it or what's the word, over tighten it, and then you're gonna have fun trying to remove it. So now that we're done with that, we're gonna try to crank over the car again and see what happens. So now you see the balance. You notice there's no more vibration. You fix the, uh, the mixture on that. Pretty much everything mixing correctly, idling the way I like it. Um, time to give her a little cleaning, dust it off, and go drive it around and see how it does. Um, easiest way that you can tell if your carburetors are off sync, number one, this is how I've been noticing it over time. Number one, uh, when you get accelerating, it kind of hesitates or jerks. Uh, that's because, like I said, uh, you're not getting a proper mixture of fuel and air or your RPMs are off. You know, you'll notice that my RPMs were pretty far off on everything. So that's number one. Number two, um, if it starts sounding like a Subaru, you know, if you hear the exhaust and it starts, it doesn't sound like it's running right, it sounds like it's misfiring, more than likely it's probably one of your jets is off or your spark plugs are out. I just replaced all the plugs on this guy. Um, I think I'm due for some new wires. I'm uh, probably going to do some other stuff um, down the road, but for the moment, I mean, that's what I need to get done. Um, so now that you saw how that works, uh, play around with it. it you, it's hard to f really mess it up. It's the hard part is that you're that you you got to have fun and you got to do it, um, and just pay attention to little things here and there. You'll listen to things. You'll learn really, really quickly that these cars are all about visual and hearing on how these cars run and idle and how you want them to sound and perform, pretty much. Um, another thing is, I never used the springs that came with these. Uh, with these, I went to Home Depot. I picked up some nice, uh, stronger, stiffer springs and I cut them pretty short. Um, because of this car, the gas pedal kind of sucks on it, so I ended up doing that. So my gas pedal has a better firmer feel to it uh, I recommend maintaining these springs because they will crack or break they're not the best springs in the world so just keep an eye on those but that's it guys thanks again for watching Pinchao's Garage and this little uh, section of uh, old school air cooled um, I keep these guy cars alive because I love them and they're probably the best cars on the road uh, for the fact that number one they're, they're always a head turner 
Number two, they're super cheap to maintain. Super cheap. So thanks again, everybody. Peace out. Peace, love, and happiness. And as always, break, fix, and repeat. Wait, 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 wait. wait. We're not done yet. <laughs> One more step. Uh, very, very vital, actually. <laughs> uh, is actually your links. Remember how early in the episode uh, I showed you guys how to break these loose? Well, you need to break them loose. You'll notice there's a little bit of play in them. And now, if you turn these, this will pretty much open and close your, your throttle body here. Now, what you need to do is pay very close attention that you don't have any, any play in here and over here. So, if this is closed, you'll notice that the throttle body has some play here. You see that? And over here, it's got nothing. So that means when the car is on, this is going to be idling higher this side, and this side is going to be closed. So we need to make sure there's no play here or here. A gap, pretty much. So if you can push that back and there's no play, no play, you're pretty much where you need to be. And then you have to lock these suckers in place. And then just double check, give the throttle a quick pull, let go, make sure there's no no gap, no clipping or tapping, and that's it. Alright? Sorry for that, but we got it taken care of. Now the throttle is set correctly. You're good to go drive it now. Peace out, guys.